My name is Bridget Pargolski and I had a breast cancer diagnosis that was missed for years because of dense breast tissue. So I'm making this video just to kind of share with everybody what I have learned over the past few years about dense breast tissue and some things that might have made a difference in me finding my cancer early. I was diagnosed in February of 2012. I wasn't shocked when I found out I had breast cancer because I know how common it is. I know that one in eight women will receive a breast cancer diagnosis in their lifetime. And I was confident we caught it early because I had done everything I was supposed to do. I had mammograms and ultrasounds every year on time and without fail. I was followed by a breast care specialist because I had dense breast tissue, which is very common. Um, so I just knew that we caught it early. I woke up after surgery and found out that we didn't catch it early, that it had moved into my lymph nodes and I was now stage three. Um, the first time I, and if you don't, if you're not familiar with breast cancer staging, there are four stages in breast cancer. Stage four is where it's already moved into your bones, brain, or liver. It's metastasized. The reason that's important is because your chance of survival drops as the staging increases. So if you find your breast cancer at stage one, according to the American Cancer Society, you have a 99 to 100% five-year survival rate, meaning, you know, you're good. When it moves to stage three, that five-year survival rate drops down to 72%. So it's very important to find breast cancer early. The first time I met with my oncologist, this is what he said to me. He said, Bridget, you have dense breast tissue. Your mammograms are difficult to read. Reading a normal mammogram is like looking for a pine tree in a prairie. Reading your mammogram was like looking for a pine tree in a forest of pine trees, and you're looking for an ugly one. And I remember thinking I was gonna fall out of my chair. I couldn't believe what he just shared with me but I really couldn't believe that it took getting into an oncologist's office for somebody to give me that information. So I started looking into breast density and trying to learn how it impacted my mammograms to try to understand this better. And I came upon a TED Talk by Dr. Deborah Rhodes at the Mayo Clinic, which I would encourage you to Google and try to find. She did a great job of explaining the problem and I must have watched it 20 times because there's a lot of information in it and I really wanted to understand this. I want to share with you some of what I've learned through my research. Uh, having dense breast tissue is very common. According to the American College of Radiology, 50% of women have dense breast tissue. It's more common when you're younger. You're, it can change year to year as the composition of your breast changes. So dense breast tissue is made up of fibrous and glandular tissue in your breast as compared to fat. The problem is this tissue shows up white on a mammogram and so does cancer. I have, okay, I hope you can see this. This is an example of what an extremely fatty breast would look like on a mammogram. This is an example of how cancer would show up on that very fatty breast if the woman would develop it. It's a white, you can't miss it, right there. Okay, if you have dense breast tissue, it shows up white. This is an extremely dense breast right here, and all that white is the density. This is the same woman's breast the same year, only now this is an MRI image. That's her cancer. You don't even see it in the mammogram. And that's what the problem is. So 50% of women have dense breast tissue. It's also an independent risk factor for breast cancer, which nobody told me. Um, if you have two women side by side, one has extremely dense tissue, one has completely fatty tissue, the gal with the dense breast has a four to six time greater chance of, uh, of having breast cancer than the gal with fatty tissue. So it's an independent risk factor. Um, it lowers the sensitivity of a mammogram to as low as 48% in the densest of breasts. And mine were. Mine were extremely dense, the highest category. So that means uh, my mammogram had less than a 50-50 shot of revealing my cancer should it be present, and nobody told me that. Every year when I got a mammogram result letter that said normal, 
I thought that meant I didn't have cancer. I now know what it meant was the radiologist couldn't see cancer, and there's a big difference. Um, after I finished my treatment, I decided I needed to know how long my cancer had been there. So my doctor sent me for a second opinion to the Mayo Clinic, and I specifically asked to meet with Dr. Deborah Rhodes, whose TED Talk I had watched so many times. She told me that um, after looking at the type of tumor I had, the characteristics of my tumor, and the size of my tumors, actually there were two, that my cancer had likely been there for five years. That means four years in a row, I got mammogram result letters that said I had a normal mammogram when I actually had cancer. Why did they find my cancer in that fifth year? Because by then I was starting to have other symptoms. So I wanted to go over the symptoms of breast cancer. I mean, everybody knows the lump or bump, but there are a lot of symptoms to be watching for. Swelling of part of your breast or your breast, breast pain, nipple changes, turning of a nipple, redness, scaliness, or thickening of the nipple or breast skin. It looks like more of a dermatology problem, but it could be an indicator of breast cancer. A discharge from your nipple or a lump under your arm. So how do you find out if you have dense breast tissue? Um, don't assume that if nobody's ever told you that you don't have it, you're gonna have to, to dig for this information. And I asked one gal if she knew, and she said, nope, mine are real soft, I don't have it. You can't tell by feeling, your doctor cannot tell by feeling. The only way you will know is from a mammogram. Call the doctor that writes the order for your mammograms and ask the, the doctor to send you a copy of your mammogram report. Not the result letter you get in the mail, the report that he gets. It will have a lot more information. If that report doesn't say anything about density. Again, you cannot assume that you don't have dense breast tissue. At that point, you're gonna to have to call the center where you had your mammogram done, ask them to pull your last mammogram film and have the radiologist comment on your density and get back to you. That's how you will know. We had, I asked women um, that I knew to send me their mammogram reports last year because I wanted to take a look at what information the doctors were getting. And um, there was an instance where a gal was actually a breast cancer survivor. She had one remaining breast, the other one had been removed. She knew that she had extremely dense breast tissue from somebody telling her in the past, and her mammogram report that went to her doctor last year made no mention of density, believe it or not. Um, when you go for mammograms from here on out, tell the technician that you would like to know if you have dense breast tissue. And that way, hopefully, they will either tell you that day or it will be included in your letter. Um, if you find out that you do have dense breast tissue, you're going to have to advocate for yourself. There are a handful of other tests that you can add to that mammogram to increase your chance of finding cancer early should you develop it. And I'll just quickly run through those. Um, I am not going to push for one over the other. It would be a decision that you need to make with your physician, but just know that that's the frustrating part for me. There are other tests out there that could have found my cancer. I didn't know I needed those tests. Nobody was honest with me about what the situation was. And so I am trying to spread the word so that women can advocate for themselves. 3D mammography is the big thing now. There has been some research that has suggested it's better for women with dense tissue. It's better. I don't think it's the answer. I don't think it's gonna become the standard of care for women with dense tissue but it would improve your chances of finding cancer in a dense breast somewhat. It still is limited by density. Um, whole breast ultrasound, and so that's not like, um, I had cysts that they would look at with that ultrasound, so they were looking at a specific area to make sure it looked okay. Whole breast ultrasound would be an ultrasound of the entire breast. Um, a mammogram with contrast, otherwise known as an MBI, which is what Deborah Rhodes talks about in her TED Talk, um, and an MRI. Insurance uh, likely might give you some trouble paying for these additional tests. What I have learned from someone who worked in an insurance company is you have to keep repealing. If you want that MRI, 
you might have to repeal or appeal to your insurance company five or six times before anybody really will take a look at what you're asking for and why you want it. But I will tell you that my oncologist's wife turned 40, had her mammogram, he found out that she had dense breast tissue. He went to bat for her, battled with insurance, and got his wife an MRI. Most of us are not lucky enough to be married to a radiologist who understands this or an oncologist who understands this and will advocate for us. So we have to advocate for ourselves. Um, what happened to me, my cancer diagnosis being delayed, happens to women all the time. And I don't even think they realize what just happened to them. A lot of women who are diagnosed with stage two or stage three or stage four breast cancer think it was a matter of terrible timing, that their cancer must have started growing right after that last mammogram to get this far in a year. The reality is 90% of breast cancers grow very slowly. That means we have a large window of opportunity to find those cancers at stage one. And frankly, we're missing that opportunity far too often because of dense breast tissue. The other thing that I think is important to know, and I think this is just my opinion, I think what happens is everybody wants to talk about family history. If a woman doesn't have a history of breast cancer in her family, I think radiologists just give us a pass, just send that mammogram through as normal when they really don't know. The problem with that, and this is so important to understand, is that 75 to 85% of women diagnosed with breast cancer have no family history. That means we're all at risk. It would be great if we had a model to predict who was gonna get breast cancer that actually worked with some reliability, but the family history thing, it doesn't really work because we're all at risk. Um, anyway, please share this information with women that you know. If you want to private message, or private message me, ask me any questions, I'd be happy to send you research, to send you articles, um, to help you find something that you're looking for. Um, but please spread the word because nobody should die of breast cancer, but we have to find it early. Thanks.